Adam Phillips with American Business Systems. We are going to be chatting with a successful entrepreneur uh, and ABS licensee, Juliana Madsen, here in just a few minutes. Uh, I would like to first, uh, as people are logging into the webinar here, I want to make sure that everyone can hear me loud and clear. So if you would, please look over there on the right side, your little uh, go to webinar control panel. You should see a little control panel where you can uh, raise your hand. There's a little button that has a picture of a hand on it. If you could click that and raise your hand and just let me know that I'm coming through loud and clear. Uh, okay, great. Uh, Alicia can hear me. Funmi can hear me. Patrick, Rob, Ronald, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for uh, doing that. You can un click on that button and lower your hand again if you'd like. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started here. So. I am going to go on to the next slide. I'm going to show you a picture that uh, Juliana sent me of her, and that is her son, Miller. Uh, I'm assuming that's some type of graduation uh, ceremony there. Probably not, uh, probably not college yet, but, uh, but uh, you've got some kind of award there, I'm sure. So anyway, we're going to be chatting with her in just a little bit here, but I'd like to kind of go ahead and just start by giving you a brief uh, overview of American business systems. I know some of you have never been on one of these webinars before. Some have been on many, many webinars, which is great. We're glad to have you back. But for those that have not been on these, uh, I, like I said before, I'm Adam Phillips, and I'm the president of American Business Systems. And you know, you may be wondering, what, what is American Business Systems all about? I mean, what, what does this company do? I have no idea. Well, this is a family-owned and operated business. It was actually started by uh, my parents, Linda and Patrick, back in uh, 1994 is when they founded American Business Systems. And what they did was is they put together a package that has every single thing that a person needs from start to finish in order to be able to provide services and solutions to doctors to help the doctors get paid faster and more efficiently. So what we're doing is, is we're helping medical providers um, do what they want to do, which is focus on practicing medicine, and we take care of the headaches of all the billing and other things like that. That's what our licensees do. So, so we provide uh, the average person, you know, we can take someone with no medical background whatsoever, and we can show them how to use the system. We help them get clients, and, and, um, and it's, it's a pretty good partnership, a pretty good team, a pretty good family that we've got here. Um, it's for anybody, like I mentioned. Uh, it's a web-based system, so you see these people are on their laptops uh, using a wireless connection. So anywhere in the world that you've got an internet connection, you can access the system and do the work. Uh, so it's very flexible and very scalable. Uh, if you have not been to our website, I'd recommend doing that. It's absystems.com. I'm sure most of you have probably seen it. That's how you got to this webinar in the first place. But if you haven't, that's a good high-level overview of what you get for your money and how we help you uh, in this business and, and get clients and all that kind of good stuff, absystems.com. Uh, we have uh, a way for you to actually dig a little bit deeper. Um, if you would like to, you can actually sign up for our virtual e-tour from the main website. There's an orange button. Let me go back. There's an orange button here uh, that says take the tour or get started here, and that will actually let you get access to the e-tour, which is kind of like a brochure, but it's all online. And there's a lot of different sections up here if you see uh, opportunity, getting clients, training, support, technology. And each one of those sections goes in, in detail uh, about our business model and what it's all about. So I would recommend checking that out if you haven't seen that yet. This is a picture of our offices here in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, you are welcome to come by and visit with us anytime. We would love to chat with you. Uh, you know, if you're looking into this business and just not quite sure about it but want to come meet, meet us face to face, you're welcome to come meet uh, Patrick and myself and the rest of the staff. Uh, just give us a call and we can uh, we can arrange that. We'd, we'd love to have you there. Uh, we are on uh, Twitter. If you guys are on Twitter, you can follow us. Uh, the Twitter name is at AB Systems. That's how you can follow us. Uh, we're always posting updates on you know industry news, sales and marketing tips. Um, you know we're doing we're posting uh, interviews, kind of like what we're doing today. Uh, links to those interviews and different things like that. So. Check that out if you like. Uh, if you'd rather just go to our blog, we do that as well. Um, absystems.com slash blog is the address. Um, that's, the, that's really the, the most, the, the, I guess I would say, the freshest content you know, on our website if you go to that, uh, that address. We post all of our testimonial videos, as you can see, um, webinars like these, interviews, all kinds of good stuff out there. So, so go check that out. 
And also, if you want, you can also be notified by email. If you go out there to the blog and you'd like to uh, get an email every time there's a new post, you just go to the, the, uh, this little field right here and put in your email address and hit subscribe. Then every time we do an update, you'll get an email notification, and that will make sure that you're staying on top of uh, what we've got going on. We do interactive live training classes. And when I say interactive, uh, you see that that class has got uh, the laptops in front of them. And we've, I forgot to mention, we've actually got a live class going on this week um, with a, a room full of people that are that kind of doing what you're seeing there. But it, at first glance, you know, from this picture, it looks like, well, it's going to be a technical training with, uh, you know, a lot of uh, kind of technical stuff. And a small part of it is. I mean, we do uh, have laptops in front of you for a portion of, of, of the class, I would say probably half a day where we actually walk you through the software itself. We let you look at the technology and, and, and play with it and see how it works. Uh, but usually, once people go through that half a day uh, of, of using the software, they're, they, they see how user-friendly it is. And they're like, OK, you know, let's, let's, get to the, you know, let's get to the good stuff, the, the marketing and business development. So the focus of the live class is more on showing you very specifically how to get a doctor interested in you and interested in using your services and getting them signed up as a paying client because that's the important part. So the people that are going through these live classes that we do every, uh, every six weeks or so in Dallas, they're getting their first client signed up in about 30 to 60 days on average just depending on how long it, ta how long it takes for you to get the business going and how many hours you put into it and that sort of thing. So um, we actually have um, uh, many different uh, trainers that we bring in. Some are uh, external, some are um, li licensees themselves, like our certified trainer, Cynthia Anderson from Arizona. Uh, we have Eric Auger as our Director of Research and Development. He comes in and actually demonstrates the full you know, billing and electronic medical records uh, platform and uh, talks about all the new stuff, uh, some of the new stuff that we're allowed to talk about <laughs> in the class. Uh, and then some classes are actually, uh, they have the, the uh, uh, the pleasure of getting trained by Patrick Phillips. Every once in a while, he'll just kind of show up and do a surprise session uh, in the live class, and so that's that's always a treat for the, the licensees that get to be there for that. And our next live class, if you want to take note, our next live class is going to be August 11 through 15. Uh, that's that's the next one, and we do still have seats available for that class. If you want to get in, just give us a call. We'll do whatever we can to help you uh, make it into that class. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but um, over there on the right side where you have that go to webinar control panel, hopefully you guys can all see your control panel, there is a section in there where you can type in questions. So uh, in just a moment when I start uh, chatting with Juliana, um, please feel free. This is your opportunity to chat directly with a successful entrepreneur and an ABS licensee about how she built her business. So please uh, feel free to ask uh, questions in there. And as we go, I'll start reading those off and, uh, and having her answer some of those questions. So. Uh, hopefully you can find that question box. Um, let's see here. So uh, after that uh, brief intro, I'd like to go ahead and see if we can introduce uh, Juliana. Juliana, are you on the phone with us today? I am here. Hey, thanks for joining us today. I know you've got uh, a real busy schedule. You've got a lot going on, so I appreciate your time today. I know it's very valuable. No and, problem. Uh, Happy to <laughs> So you uh, you were uh, out of town, right? You were, you went on several vacations so far this year, or something, right? I mean, what was the deal? Yeah, I was at the beach. Yeah, every time we you and I communicated, I was somewhere else. Um, yeah, went to the beach in the summer with the kids, and then this past time, this past weekend, I was just away for several, like Monday and Tuesday, out of the office. Just got back oh. this morning. Okay. Well, that's good to hear that you're able to take the time to do that uh, as you please. <laughs> um, so, who, that, so that's Miller, your son, right there in that picture, right, Miller? Yes, that's Miller. He's five, and that was pre-K graduation. So. Pre-K graduation. Uh, oh, that's, that's cute. Uh, yes, you have, and uh, he's my young, ten-year-old little girl. Well, I'm sorry. What was the other one? A uh, ten-year-old little girl named Avery. Oh, okay. Ten and five. Good deal. Yep. That'll keep you busy. <laughs> well, um, I like to I like to start out these these interviews by just kind of sharing with people, um, telling tell, telling people a little bit about your your business background and what kind of experience you had, you know, from a business standpoint, and kind of what led you to you know making a decision to join ABS. Do you mind starting there? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's great. So I basically came from corporate America. We live in Atlanta, and, you know, there's lots of big corporations here to work for, um, and pretty much spent my entire adult career at Turner Broadcasting um, in a variety of capacities, but in the, the latest, probably the longest capacity was in the, the sales operations group where I did do a lot of operational project management, use different databases, things like that, that really provided me the skill set for, for what I'm doing now. Obviously, I'm not in the cable industry anymore, but a lot of those functions, and I have managed people, and I managed departments, and I managed budgets, all those types of things, I think, helped me be able to run my own company um, and do that, but I, I still had to come out and learn, you know, the medical, the billing side of it, and really just the whole insurance and the medical billing field altogether. Yeah, so so you had a lot of administrative stuff, but you didn't have any, any medical at all. Correct. Any, any okay. Um, what about, uh, were you, I mean, what, what attracted you to this industry or this model? I mean, were you looking at other types of businesses? Did you, did you mention that? I mean, yeah, you were looking the at only, other stuff, right? Yeah, so what I was looking for was something a little more flexible than the, the job that I had. Um, it was okay, but not great when we had our first child. But then when we had Miller, it was kind of like, okay, this, this we can't sustain this anymore. Because my husband also worked at Turner. So we were basically dropping our kids off before we had to be at work at 8 and not picking them up until after 5 o'clock every single day. And we were both like, this is just bad. We did, yeah. we just not like that environment, you know, to, to have somebody else doing that for our kids that many hours in one day. So I started looking just at what my options were, whether it was part-time at Turner or did I need to have to leave the industry altogether. Then I started looking at, franchises and things like that of how I could, you know, be my own boss. And the only, and for some reason, I don't know, I've always been kind of drawn to the medical field. Um, anyway, I just, I don't know, I guess I just find part of it fascinating. And so I'd actually, years before even looking at ABS, had looked at doing a re medical recruiting uh, franchise but after looking into all of that, I was like, oh, my gosh, I would be working more than I am at Corporate America. <laughs> so, and that, so that one just didn't seem like it was probably a great fit for me at the time. And then I just kind of kept, you know, plugging away, looking at things, always keeping an eye out for things. And that's when I came across uh, ABS information on, I think it was called FranchiseGator.com or something. I don't yeah. know if it exists anymore. Um, and I found that, and I was like, okay, medical billing, I mean, you know, I've got all the analytical skills, I've got, you know, all the skill sets that I would need to sort of do the job, but, you know, let me find out a little bit more about it. So then I went through that whole sort of due diligence process, and it's funny because Eric was, OJ was, was the, the business development guy at the time, so he was who I talked to and was the sales rep that I talked to um, that did demos for me for on some of the systems and really answered all of my questions. And after my husband and I sort of looked at it all and decided that we would go for it. Yeah. Now you, aside from Eric, um, I, I don't, I don't think we even had that, uh, that virtual brochure back when you were looking into us. So did you, did you call any of our references, any other licensees or what kind of due diligence did you do? Do you remember? Yep. Yeah. So I had, um, I've talked with Eric. I, um, did some demos of some of the products, and then yeah, called called different licensees in different parts of the country, and sort of asked all the questions that I wanted to ask, and um, then just kind of started the whole process and came out. You and I were talking about this before. Came out the training in uh, November, the end of 2009. Okay, yeah. So that you signed up in 2009. That's right. And then that's when you went through the training at the end of, of 2009, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then basically when I got back, you know, basically the first of 2000, the first of the year in 2010, I spent all my time doing like, you know, basically getting my CPA to help me get set up as an LLC, getting sort of just the whole business model set up, my name, getting bank accounts, getting, you know, doing all the administration and the logistics of setting up a company. Um, and I did, and plus I was still a Turner, 
Um, and then I left I left Turner altogether May of 2010 um, and have been really doing this ever since. Okay, so you were doing it part-time for a little while and then towards the middle of 2010 is when you left your job. Now, where, did you did you have any clients at that point or did you left knowing, okay, I've got to work, I've got to hit this hard and then do it full-time to get a client? Um, or, yeah, so the whole t from, you know, until through the May of, of leaving Turner, I was doing all of like the networking and reaching out to everybody and anybody I knew and doing sort of some of the stuff that you learn in training on how to reach out to people and who knows who and all the whole trickle down effect kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was doing all of that and I was really hitting the pavement with some of the ancillary products that can be a good foot in the door just to get build relationships. So I had probably a handful of like dentists with the choice pay with the payment plan kind of things. Okay. And then, um, but I was really doing a lot of medical management. I was part of two different lunches that were all people in various capacities that work in the medical industry. Like maybe there was a real estate, somebody who only did medical doctor, you know, real estate, and then somebody who was, uh, you know, an IT company but only for medical providers. And so I was the biller on that in that kind of networking lunch, and would go to that mostly would go to those and I could go to those while I was still working at Turner and just build relationships and then he started getting kind of referrals into that so my first probably my first true billing was a pediatrician a nurse practitioner that opened her practice and I started billing for her that January of 2011 so that was my brand that was my first billing client and I also did some credentialing for her as well so um, got her all contracts with her new for her practice and all of that. So she was my first client. Okay, you know, so your first kinda... billing client was 2011, but you said you got some some of the ancillary services. You got some accounts before that. What? How long yeah. did it take? I guess how long did it take to get your very first like Choice Pay account? Do you do you remember how long that took? Roughly. That did not take me long at all because dentists love it. Yeah. Um, it was actually it was funny. I was going. My dentist was open on the weekends, and I went, was going for an appointment for myself. It was a Saturday morning. I looked terrible. Um, you know, had on like sweats, and you know, was not going in there thinking I was planning on selling him anything. And yeah. left. And that after let talked to him. Left that afternoon. He called me back. I walked him through it. I sent him an agreement, he signed it, and I had, you know, his setup fees like that same day. So it was like I was just amazed. Wow. <laughs> I was like, okay, so that worked well, but I probably could have looked a little better. <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's what we hear a lot is dent dentists love that, that particular program. But why don't you um, tell me a little bit about the, your first billing account that you got. How did that come about? Like what was the preferred marketing method there that kind of, that deal. Yeah, that one really came about because the the IT guy that sat on that lunch that I that I went to, um, he was setting up all their. Um, he was basically his company was going to be their IT company. And oh, okay. He and he's given he's given me lots of. I've gotten many leads and many pro, and many clients from this guy that I don't even I'm not even on that lunch anymore because it's just too far away. Um, it was like a 45-minute drive, and it was just it just got to be too much to do. But I still keep in touch with all those people, and I still get refer references from them because the thing about an IT medical IT company is they're helping them get set up before they open. Because so, the, so some of these were like brand new practices um, that wanted to be outsourcing that function because they wanted to be as lean and mean as possible from the start. Mm -hmm. So. Um, they didn't want to have to go out and try and find a full-time biller that was going to sit in their office and that kind of stuff. So they are already like already interested in, and ready to outsource that function, and they just needed to have somebody tell them who to call. Yeah. Um, so a lot of my clients, actually, I'm trying to think, I've got about four people now that came out of this, just that one guy. Four clients from that one guy? Yeah. Wow. Or that, okay, that so for, for, for those of you on the call, uh, 
you know, what, what Julianne is referring to is our, our networking that we teach in, in class. Um, we actually talk to you in detail about how to find different organizations that are in your area where you can join. There's different chapters and, and, and whatnot where you can join and you, you go to these breakfasts. It's like a breakfast or a luncheon or a dinner or things on the weekend sometimes. Um, and you're not going to these things looking for doctors, right? I mean, you probably never met a doctor at any of those, right? Not typically, no. Yeah, it's usually you're you're looking to build relationships with people, like you said, like someone who already has doctors as clients themselves or knows doctors, like this IT guy. You said he's got a business where he he had services for doctors. So that's that makes a really really great strategic partnership. And we've heard a lot of good stuff about uh, IT guys. That's a, that's a good one. I, I forgot about that field, but um, like CPAs and, and realtors and different people like that um, are also good strategic partners. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to a I'm going to a chamber thing tonight that in our area that is just a drinks and hors d'oeuvres at a restaurant here in in Atlanta that's close to my house and it's a Brookhaven chamber and I'm like, okay, well, I'll be going to that tonight and <laughs> I may or may not meet anybody that ends up turning in anything, but you never know. And sometimes whenever you think, you know, you're, you're like warm leads or your prospects are going dry, all of a sudden you'll get a call. Like one of, I just got a, I just signed on a new pediatrician who I'm going to start billing for in August. I'm helping her get completely set up because she's brand new as well, open in her own practice. And she got, she actually got my name from the lady that was my first, the pediatrician I mentioned earlier that was my first client ever in 2011 and I don't even bill for her anymore because she decided eventually that she did want to bring somebody in house and I was like wow I don't even bill for that woman anymore and three years later she's given my name to somebody so I was like okay cool well you must have done good work then yeah she just wanted to try to keep it in house huh she yeah she it was there were it's funny because you know you can be the greatest biller and the greatest company, but if you don't, if the front desk isn't doing the things that you need them to do as well, um, it doesn't always quite work out. So I think she felt like she really needed somebody internally to do other functions. But you know, one of the things we always tell people is you you can't really multitask that function, or something's going to drop. You're never going to. It's not ever going to be done 100%, but yeah, she did yeah. decide to get directed, and I said, okay, great. Have, you know, thanks for, <laughs> you know, thanks a lot. Yeah. And then I picked up somebody else, and, you know, you kind of forget that that person, you don't work for them anymore. <laughs> so, you know, people come and people go. You, there's lots of things that happen. Like one client, they sold to a hospital. Well, you can't bill for the hospital because they already have a humongous, massive, uh, you know, billing team. So, you kind yeah, of have to be prepared to have your ebbs and flows of clients c coming in and sometimes not. Yeah, I mean you've got you've always got to be out there marketing if you're if you're trying to grow the business for sure. You want to be prepared for anything for sure. And that's that's we hear that we actually hear kind of what you just mentioned. We hear a lot that office managers and the people the front office people are actually they're ecstatic when they're able to outsource the billing portion to someone else and they can so they can do everything else that they have to do on a daily basis like that multitasking like what you're talking about so exactly they have to be open minded enough to know that that they're not getting you know their job and getting squashed they have to be able to know oh yeah this is going to help me yeah well obviously uh networking has worked well for you what what other marketing methods do you prefer that have that are working well for you I mean, really, honestly, <clears throat> just like we kind of learned in training, referral the referrals is 99% of my business. I I really, you know, my business development kind of goes up and down as well based off of my, you know, my workload. Because um, typically what I do is when I get a new client, I get them all set up. I work it for several months before I ever even hand it off to an employee. Um, so depending on my workload, I may not go to any networking, anything for like a month or two. And then I'll be like, Ooh, I really, you know, I really need to get back on that. So really it still is networking and referrals are my biggest thing. I tried doing direct, just never really worked for me. 
Um, I've done other mailings and things, and then of course I do anytime I can get, anytime I can do a trade show or be a you know if one of the smaller associations has like a vendor fair where you can set up a table and and have kind of the ears of the office managers and people that are decision makers. I do that. Um, most of the time I'm being very frugal with you know what where I spend my money. I don't spend a ton of money on marketing. I have my flyers, and I've got – I've definitely utilized the ABS website for marketing materials for sure. I have a big stack of all different – I've got my folders. I've got my uh, one, you know, the postcard about – the postcard for just electronic claims filing, and I've got the postcard for choice pay, and I've got all those different postcards because they look so slick and professional, and I've got my – logo and everything on it and my information on it so I use those a lot good so you uh, you just use those in case you need to hand them out to somebody or something like yeah. that yeah like like I'm going to a vendor, I'll have a table set up with the flyers and a different a variety of things sitting on it that are takeaways that somebody could just take with them instead of just um, instead of just my business card oh and I also use the cash the Cash Crunch to Cash Flow book as a giveaway at almost yeah. all of my things. I've got a whole stack of them. Um, and so I get people to put their business cards in there, and then I draw it for them to win, you know, the, the free book. And that way I also then have everybody's business card ah, to follow there up. Go. There you go. To talk. <laughs> yeah. That, so those are the main ways that I market. But I – T truly did learn most of it from the training. I mean, that, that week-long training is just invaluable. Good, good to hear it, yeah. Um, well, I, I've got a couple of people asking the same question, so I guess I'll go ahead and read these. Um, I've got a question uh, from Lar Larkia saying, ask Juliana, how many doctors does she have now and how many hours does she work a day? Oh, that's a good many, question. <laughs> how many clients do you um, have now? And and I, I guess let's go ahead and ask the, the staff question. I mean, do you have anybody helping you with the business? Uh, and when did that happen? Or Yes. So let me think. I, I probably should have had that. I probably should have had the number already thinking about doing, you know, when I knew I was going to do this webinar. I have about six true medical provider offices that we bill for that the you know A to Z claims through you know posting payments and patient statements and posting patient stuff and you know working the entire you know gamut of those um, and I, the reason I say true medical providers is because I also have other clients that I do other things for um, um, I've got durable medical equipment clients there's probably about eight of those those don't require the same uh, hours and the same types of things because it's a, such a different specialty, um, but it still is. I'm still doing their billing. Um, but one of the things we also do for them is we we call and do benefit checks for the actual patient to see if they have coverage for that particular supply. Um, and so I charge them per I charge them a certain dollar amount per call. Um, okay, so that's an added added service that you're doing for the DME company. Yeah, because if you don't know their benefits, like the whole point is obviously if, if they don't have coverage, then when they come in to, for that appointment, the provider should know that so that they can say, well, you don't have any coverage by Blue Cross Blue Shield or whoever your plan is. So whatever you decide you're going to get is your responsibility financially. So let's talk about that and let's figure out what works best for you. Um, these are ones, the majority of my DME are hair salons that do wigs for cancer patients. So some people have wig coverage and some people don't. So it's really important to know what their benefits are beforehand. And that's a service that we just kind of carved into, okay, I'm doing your billing for this when you have people that are going to buy a wig and we're going to submit the claim on their behalf. But before we do that, let's find out what their coverage is. Um, so I might, my company might do 25 or 30 benefit checks for that durable medical equipment provider in a month and then only submit 10 claims for them. So you got to kind of cover your expenses with how much time you're spending on the calls and then a, I do a percentage on the collectibles for the claims and that kind of thing or a minimum. 
Um, so I'd say there's about eight or so of those, six true doctors. Um, and I guess that's really, I guess those are really the, really my breakdown is true provi medical providers and then my DME. Um, and then I mentioned earlier credentialing. I just sort of picked up learning how to do credentialing and helping people get contracts. So I do that with the durable medical equipment people too because they don't, none of them have gone out to try and get a contract with the insurance carriers before. So that's an ancillary kind of uh, product or service that I, that my company does. So to answer your question about how much time do I spend, well, it, it depends. Like when, when I'm totally working a new account, I could spend, you know, I could work eight or nine hours all day long, but that's kind of my personality. I, I just dig and dive right in. Um, most of the time, if you're picking up a new client, they typically, you're kind of getting it in a mess. Um, so the first couple of months while you're getting to know them and learning it and, and trying to work out their accounts receivable and their, the mess that maybe the person before left, um, you know, you're working more hours. But I have three people that work for me, two are kind of part-time and one is more of a full-time uh, where she works more full-time hours. And, had, and we'll be taking on more of the, these accounts, like this pediatrician I just signed up, and some of my urgent, I have urgent care facilities. Um, so that, it's a hard question about the time, because the, the thing that I love about it is that I might work seven days a week, but not full time, but not full time every single day, because I want to do something with my kids, or so I might like crank out work in the morning until about lunchtime and then take them to the pool for two and a half hours. Yeah. Knowing though that if something comes up, I'm probably going to have to deal with it or address it later that night or the next day. You just have to really manage your schedule and manage your time so that it's, it works for you. But at the same time, you have to know that your client, you know, what hours your clients work and when the, your doctor might want to speak with you or when the front desk might need to talk to you. Or if you have to call insurance carriers, you have to do that between, you know, 8 and 5 or whatever the times they're open. So it's really hard to say, but right now I'm pretty busy, and I, I, could, work, I could work a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, but it's for me, and it's for my company, and it's all coming back, you know, to me. It kind of goes with the territory, yeah. Well, I mean, I think a good point to make, though, is that it is relatively flexible like you mentioned I mean you can do the bulk of the work like in the morning or in the evening or right like you can kind of yeah. pick and choose when the claims get put into the system and you know follow up and that sort of thing uh, yeah you know, like I could do all the claims at every night if I wanted to and then if I had to talk to somebody with insurance companies then I would have to do it during the day but you know that I would just know, okay, well, I need to call Blue Cross Blue Shield and about these five people. But, you know, a good point is you were asking me where I was this week. Well, I was just in the mountains, and I took my laptop, and I wasn't planning to do a ton of work, but I brought it with me because I knew that if I needed to do – if somebody needed me to look at something or if somebody needed my something, you know, quicker turnaround, then I would have everything with me, and it's all there on my laptop, and I could call people back and, you know – not completely seem totally out of pocket because I could be reached. Yeah, and that's the beauty of using a web-based system, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's see if I can break it down to an even easier question. How long does it take to just put in, like, one claim? Like, have you ever timed yourself, or can you give me an you estimate know, on that? You know, it's funny. I have because I wanted to know that when I was starting to hire people. Um, Let's say, you know, let's just keep it simple. Let's say you've got a doctor and he see, he's just a one doctor practice, family practice. He sees 10 people a day. Mm -hmm. If I went in and did those 10 claims that night because he's already signed off on them, they're already sitting there waiting for me, I have access to everything I need, and there's no problems, and I send all those 10 claims, I probably did that in about 10 minutes. Wow. Because – Technology, the technology today is that you're just really reviewing the actual encounter and then sending it electronically through, you know, all the proper means, the clearinghouse and all that kind of stuff. Then you got to go back in and look at all the reports to make sure that all those 10 went out without a problem. 
And then if they did, then you know that within like seven days, seven to ten days, depending on who the carrier is, they're going to then all of a sudden come in and there are payments and you're going to post them and you're going to be done. Usually about 97%, 98% are clean, out the door, never have to touch again claims. Yeah. Okay. And then well, it's hopefully. the one percent yeah. that can be annoying. <laughs> yeah, there's always always a small percentage of those. Well, hopefully that answers that question. Um, so you can kind of that's that's typically what what we hear from every licensee is they can put a claim in in under two minutes. That's what we usually hear. Un, under two minutes is is the the normal. So yeah, uh, I would say that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it all depends on your process. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Steven's asking if you obtain a new client, how do you make sure they have no lag time? Is there any way to good answer to that? Like, do they have to? Well, you tell me. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a hard question to answer too because it depends on what what happened. Like, did their person just up and leave, and they haven't had anybody billing for them, or? You know, if if they're proactive enough and they are, like, let's say I meet a doctor at something and they're like, you know, I haven't really been happy with the current company I'm using or I haven't been happy with my current internal person. I'm really considering this. Well, then you can be strategic and you can go, okay, well, let's figure out an, let's figure out a, an effective date and let's figure out when we're going to transition and what my company needs to do to help transition so that, you know, we're able to – not skip a beat. Um, that's where you just have to be really organized and, and really set out the the plan of logistics and time frame and what needs to happen and how, you know, you're almost like, you know, the project manager at that point where you're telling the doctor what needs to happen or their office administrator what needs to happen to have a fl smooth transition and a smooth flow. But if they all of a sudden just don't have somebody billing and then you have to pick it up later, I mean, you, but they know that there's going to be a um, a downtime or a, a time where they're, you may be sending out a lot more claims for them if they've been sitting there. Yeah, I mean, lag time, really, that could mean different things. But, I'm, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure if he's talking about actually them, their their cash flow, you know, coming in. That, that may be what he's referring to. But, um, yeah, if if, if – if their billing is a mess right now before you, you know, sign them up, then obviously, like you said, you've got a lot of work to do to get those claims, you know, all put in in a timely manner and put in properly so that they do get paid on them. And then, of course, there's the time frame it takes for the claim to get, you know, accepted, you know, from the insurance companies and all that kind of stuff. I've actually heard that uh, one of the delays is mainly from, like, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but Medicare, like, let, notifying them that you're going to be – they're going to be switching to a different uh, system or something like that. Is that true? Well, yeah. Some some Medicare patients are a little confused about what their coverage is, and they'll tell them it's straight Medicare, but it's really a managed care or it's an advantage plan or something. So the front desk isn't getting the right information at the time of service. So it does. It goes to Medicare, and the Medicare basically kicks it out as a denial and says, no, this person has other coverage or this person has – you know, an advantage plan, and so then you have to go back and go. Okay, well, did the front look at your scans and the in in your the medical records piece of the of the system, and did they scan in their insurance card? Is it you know, you sort of go into looking at what all your you know your at that point you're being an investigator and trying to figure out okay, well what what is their coverage, and then I can resend it to the appropriate place. Um, those are the ones that are going to be your 2% where it's the the right information wasn't given at the first at the at the time of service whether it was the patient or the front desk either one could be doing it entering it incorrectly um but the lag time really i mean when when you're picking up a new client you work their the date you're supposed to start their billing you do you work their claims and then you also work any of their old stuff simultaneously, but in a different manner because they require different you know uh, mindset. Um, but you basically are you're working both of them at the same time because you're trying to get trying to figure out you know what else needs to be sent from their older stuff that you can help send out and fix versus what you're you know say I'm supposed to start on August 1st. Well, on August 1st on any 
claims from August 1st on is on my company, and um, you're going to want to be able to show that you're able, that you know their cash flow is coming in because it's you're you're getting them, you know you're you're basically submitting claims on a daily basis. That's why I tell people I'm like. You, you still have to do, you know, there's stuff that you do on a daily basis, there's stuff you do on a weekly basis, and there's stuff you do on a monthly basis. And you do that for all accounts, regardless of who they are. Um, and you kind of just use that that flow, that workflow for all your accounts um, yeah. so that you stay on track. You, you mentioned that uh, you're, you had a pediatric client, uh, or you did. Uh, what? Uh, another question came in from uh, Laura. What What type of physicians or what type of specialties do you have right now that you're billing for? And um, yes, I've got one pediatrician that I've been working for since he was probably my second, um, he was probably my second billing client I got and I've been working from him for him in 2000 from 2011 till now. Um, and then I'm picking up a new, another pediatrician. So I've got pediatrics as a specialty. I've got several urgent care centers. So urgent care, which is a, fantastic model um, because they're popping up left and right. Um, so I highly recommend people if you know, you know, to target urgent cares because they're, that's kind of my target now. I, I've been targeting urgent cares more lately. Okay. Um, and then I have, a, I have family practice, which is just, you know, your general practitioner that yeah. sees from birth to death, mm -hmm. um, which is also great because you learn all the, procedural codes and all the ling lingo. Um, 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 who else? So the urgent care, pediatrics, and family medicine, and then the durable medical equipment. Those are my main categories right now and across the board. Um, I, I haven't had any other specialties that I used to work for that aren't in those categories. Now, I thought the, I thought the wig thing, cancer patient wig thing, I thought that was really interesting and I'd never thought about that now is that is that an actual like wig shop or are they considered like a durable medical equipment well so in the insurance carriers eyes they're a durable medical equipment provider um, but all of my clients are hair salon owners okay so they first and foremost cut people's hair but they also are understand hair loss and so then they decided that they want to get into the medical side of it and then to get into the medical side of it and to go out to con uh, oncology departments and uh, cancer centers and hospitals. They have to know, they have to have tried to get in network with insurance carriers and they have to kind of know what they're talking about. And so it's just crazy how things happen. But this, the, my first account that was, the, that was the salon is a, person that cuts my mom's hair mm. and she was like remind me again what juliana does and my mom said oh she's she owns her own medical billing company and she was like oh my gosh i've been doing i just called randstad which is a staffing service here just to see if they could help me find a biller because i am so sick of doing this myself i don't have time blah 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 uh. so i started doing that for her probably in 2000 and maybe that was 2011 also I've been doing it with her for years. And then she got me in touch with, she's part of a bigger thing, kind of like ABS. She's part of a bigger um, wig manufacturing company that ha has a kind of a, you know, a marketing side that's called Recover with Confidence. Um, and so I basically go, I, I'm now there, I'm now Recover with Confidence and OnRight's preferred medical billing company. And they fly me out to their, conference every year and I do a medical billing class. Wow. I do a session, you know, so I do a session. I'm there as a as a vendor or I'm there as a, you know, panelist. Um and that's how I've grown it to eight because I meet all these people every year I'm out there and I almost always pick up three or four more people every year. That is so neat. I think I think that's really cool. Yeah, um, it is cool. Not a big part of my business, obviously, <laughs> but it is a cool. It's, it's rewarding, and it's especially you're helping uh, you know people that own a hair salon. They have no idea and don't want to know about medical billing. Yeah, I, I ne would never even have thought of that had you not mentioned it as, as a potential market there. So interesting. Yeah, um, I don't know if you want to go. I don't know if anybody really wants to target that, but it just kind of landed in my lap, and I <laughs> ran with it. Sure. 
Uh, uh, Laura's <laughs> asking, how, how do you do you bill a percentage, basically, for your billing accounts, or how do, how do you bill? Yeah, and I really I learned all of that at, at training. I use the contracts that you know we we have. I use all the templates that are on the ABS site. Um, and I use the forum a lot to ask people about how other licensees, how they are paying their employees, how they're structuring certain things. But, yeah, right now I basically have a monthly flat fee that I charge. That's hmm. gonna They're going to get charged that flat line item regardless, and then I charge a certain percentage on collections, um, on collectibles, because right now, you know, you do so much stuff and you, you do a lot of your own expenses that um, – I find that that flat monthly fee has helped cover just some of those ancillary things that you don't even think about, like postage and the time that we're spending on some of these denials that aren't ever going to get paid. Because I, what I tell people all the time is, I was like, seven percent of zero is still zero. Yeah. <laughs> so you might want to consider not doing just seven, you know, just a percentage. Yeah, I mean that's the good news about this business is, you know, the pricing model. You. This is your business, so whatever pricing makes the most sense for you and each of your individual clients, that's what you that's what you do. Um, we have licensees that do straight percentage only. We have licensees that do flat rate only, and we have licensees that kind of mix it, like like you mentioned. So uh, per claim or whatever, yeah. And yeah. none of my none of my um, none of my fee structures are the same for any given person. It's all you have to be customized. You know, you have to be personalized. You have to be customizable. And like like I said earlier, those benefit checks that I do for all those salons, that's just an added. It's like X, X dollar for every call we make. Um, plus, if we do your billing, then it's this and this, and it can just, you know. And if I did your credentialing, then it's this one-time fee. Or so you, you know, you're going to have a big, you're going to have a different structure uh, depending on what their specialty is or what their situation is. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Another question from Lar Larkia: uh, Are your employees working from home, or do you have an office? I do not have an office. Um, everybody is virtual, and I hope to always stay that way because um, it kind of defeats the purpose, I, I believe, um, <laughs> of being the flexibility and the virtualness and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, everybody has their own home office and um, works out of there home and does their own flexibility and you know I have my expectations and we have the certain times that we have calls and you know ways to communicate and ways to keep on top of you know the project or the issues that are out there for each account but um, we rarely like a perfect example is my new employee she just she was here in my house earlier today she was here for three hours training she'll come here a couple of times and we'll just to be hands-on and then after that we'll just be talking over the phone if and walking through the same system, you know, looking at the same system. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll, we definitely get together when we need to, but nobody, you know, and then of course we'll go to the doctor's offices when we need to, um, but nobody works. We, we don't all drive into the same office and see each other on a daily basis. Yeah, I mean, I would say you're, that's more common for us to hear that. There are some licensees that do get office space because they're in a, a large metropolitan area, and they just want that presence. And they built they've built the business to where you know the operational cost of, of things is, is they can afford it, so they do that. But yeah, most people, even even the ones that have built a, built a pretty big business like you, they've they've uh, they're just all working from home. So hopefully that answers that question. I do have another question about staff, though. You 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 mentioned that you've got some data entry people. You built your business to this point, which is a you know pretty impressive. Have you ever had anybody, or do you have anybody helping you, like from a sales standpoint, like a sales rep or anything like that? Well, one of my employees that's been working for me the longest, and by the way, they all worked at Turner with me, um, <laughs> and they all left, Both and I was like, are. yeah, you want to come for me? And they said yes. Um, they'd all worked for me at Turner at one point or another, so that's the the trust factor is there, um, and yeah, I just had sure. to teach sort of the billing stuff too. So that's just another um, way, way to show you that you don't absolutely have to have medical billing experience to, to do it. But um, she, she's she been doing it with me long enough and now she's picked up other accounts and she's now, she's she does one of my pediatricians and she does one of my urgent cares. And so she, and she's also come with me to some of the vending vendor shows or the um, trade shows. 
So she's done it enough and has heard my spiel enough that she um, she could, and she does go to some of the where she lives. She's in like North Georgia, um, and I'm just kind of like here in the middle, at, or you know, in Atlanta. And so she's gone to some of those, and she knows I have worked it out with her that and she knows that if she brought on any new accounts, that I would compensate her for that. Um, but I don't technically have a sales rep, and I have I have looked at that, and I've done I've gone on the you know the ABS LSS and done the webinar for that, and like written things down and gone, okay, is do I want to do this? Can I do this? Will it work for me? And honestly, I just every time I go to do it, I end up picking up a new client and I go, okay, well, I don't know if I really need to do this. <laughs> um, so yes and no. I mean, she can, and anybody that works for me can bring on new clients and probably has enough, you know, she actually, um, she, she met somebody at one of the things and we thought there might be a, a something might come out of it, but it hasn't yet, but you never know. I mean, she, that person could call her in two months from now. Um, so she does it kind of, she knows she can, and she has gone to some of those, you know, networking meetings and stuff as an account rep, you know, so to speak. Um, but I haven't ever hired a full, you know, sales rep, like commission only. So you would probably just give her like a one-time referral fee of some sort if something happens? Yeah, I think I would give her, you know, I think I would give her a percentage of, like, if we got a setup fee out of it, and then I'd probably give her, like, if and then if she actually ended up w working it, too, like, doing the true billing for it, then I'd give her probably residuals of that. Um, I think that's what we we kind of came up with. Yeah, that's that's typically what we hear is, someone who's going to be on an ongoing basis out there marketing for you or, or doing the work, they get kind of an incentivized ongoing, you know, real small percentage of the billing that they do or something like that. Yeah. The other thing I've really been trying to figure out is <clears throat> maybe some other licensee can help me is I really want to also have, instead of, I pay them hourly, I really would like to pay them hourly plus do like a monthly or a quarterly productivity incentive so that because mm -hmm. that's the one thing you see in all the doctor's offices is some of the reason that their front staff or whoever's doing the billing isn't they, they don't have an incentive to get it done right the first time because they don't care if the doctor makes five million or one million they're still getting their paycheck but for our business we're get if we're getting a percentage of collections and I'm not the one doing it myself my staff better be doing it the, the right way the first time too because that ends up being, you know, how much I can bill out and then how much I can pay, you know, then I pay them. Yeah. So I haven't really gotten far yet, but I, I do, you know, I'm trying to figure out the best way to give them some uh, additional, like, bonus or some kind of incentive plan on, on productivity and accuracy. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, let's see. So tell me about, you know, you're in Atlanta, right? Yeah. That's that's a pretty large town, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. How, how how has this affected how you how you market? I mean, um, do you do you market just in Atlanta, or do you kind of market outside of that, or even in other states, or have you do you have any kind of marketing plan that you could share? Uh, I don't. I mean, outside of my just mar my networking, that's really. I mean, so obviously with the DME, because I, I'm part of this bigger corporation, um, I have people in other states, so they're all over the states, but I wouldn't necessarily be going to those states to find them. They just happen to be, you know, I can do their, if they're a salon in Delaware, they're a salon in Delaware. Um, but it's interesting because there are several associations that I find to be better better than others, and so I go to those. And they might be, they're really not even here in metro Atlanta. And so, I, I mean, I have clients all over the surrounding counties to where I am um, that I wouldn't be marketing to based off where I am. So I, I really, I really don't market. I mean, my marketing <laughs> is me, is me out there meeting people. Yeah. So the, the outside clients outside your, your normal zone are just from referrals. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, that's that's good. I mean, that's the easiest way to get business is warm referrals. Someone who's already got some level of of knowing you or or you know liking you or trusting you or one of those three. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. What about? Uh, I mean, well, since you are in a large area, large large town, let's let's talk about competition. I mean, obviously, there's got to be other you know medical billing companies out there. How how have you dealt with competition that you've run across? Has it been much of an issue? It hasn't been much of an issue. Um, it's interesting because when you go, when you're part of these associations, and when you go to some of their, like some of them might just be over lunch, and they're and they have some kind of like seminar or some kind of speaker or whatever, or when they have their career their fairs for their people, I don't find that I ha that there's like two tables down another medical billing company. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because. I just I haven't run into where I've got where I'm not the only person there that is in that kind of business. Um, you know, there'll be like five real estate people for that, or there'll be like five people trying to sell EMR products and stuff like that. But um, I really haven't run into a lot of where I feel like I have a lot of competition. Um, most of the time, when I'm meeting with the doctor or I'm done the you know the practice analysis with them, it's typically because they're not happy with what's going on at the time and they've gotten my number from somebody that they trust and I usually don't find that they've said, okay, well, I'm talking to you and somebody else. Actually, yeah. I take that back. My family doctor that I got in, I might have gotten him in 2011. Um, he, I was, man, I was totally going after him, and he was a referral from that same, that same group, that same lunch that I had gotten from the IT guy, and yeah. he was, he was, it was between me, a small boutique company, or it was between an, a larger company, and I was able to kind of convince him that going with a larger one would be a big mistake, and that staying with me, he was going to be, he would have you know, he would have me whenever he needed me to fill him in on anything. And he's been very happy. So I don't even know who my competition was because I didn't say, well, who's the company? But um, <laughs> it was definitely a larger billing company that he did not go with. And he went with me, and we've been doing his billing for at least two years now. It was July of – yeah, I guess it was July of 2012. Um, and they are just happy as can be. They've never been happier. Yeah, I mean, that's most doctors are pretty impressed when, you know, you're talking with them and you say, look, I'm the owner of this business. Here's my cell phone number. If there's anything at all, you know, you're going to be able to get in touch with me directly. And, you know, it's that, that does speak volumes, knowing that they've got somebody local. And that other company, who knows where they were located. You know, if you're right there in the neighborhood, basically, that, that makes yeah. a big, that's a big deal, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, what what about the doctors that you do talk to that have that uh, you know you got referrals for or whatever? H have you found that they're most of them are trying to do their billing in their offices or they're already outsourcing for the most part? Or have you what are your what's your thoughts on that? Um, most of them, it's pretty much a combination. Some of them have an internal, and they're like, oh, I just don't, I just you know, would rather outsource this and, and let and free that person up to do other things. Um, and then some might say, yeah, I just, I, I really, you know, don't know what my company is doing for me right now. And so they're interested, but the biggest thing with the, with the networking and the referrals and the, the referrals are great because you're really getting referred to somebody when they have that need. And when you're networking, that person might not have the need. They might not even be interested. They might even be like, anti-outsourcing um, and I just basically chalk those people up to well I'm not going to waste my breath and not going to you know chase after them and then uh, you know who knows eventually they might call you and say you know what I've changed my mind I am interested can you come you know and talk to me yeah and the biggest thing is to go out and do the practice analysis and, and be able to do all the professional type things where you can actually go back with them to that with that proposal but I think it's probably 50-50 a lot of people are in in house, but they're just not happy with their in house, or they found out that person was stealing from them, and they had to fire them, and then now they're like, "Oh man, what did that person even do?" Right. Nothing. 
<laughs> Nothing to steal your money. Yeah, yeah. We we hear that a lot too where at first the doctor was like, No, I don't need any help, you know, and then a couple months later their biller quits or, you know, something like you said, some disaster happens and they, they give them a call back, you know. So accounts don't some accounts don't come around immediately. They don't sign immediately, but it's just as long as you're following up with them, you know, put them on a drip marketing campaign or something like that, they'll be top of mind. Uh, you, you'll be top of mind, I should say, whenever whenever it is it is time. Uh, well, yeah. I've, I've, uh, well, I've got four. What's that? Go ahead. Go ahead. I was oh, just going to say, this popped in my mind. One of my family practices that I that had four doctors, um, they sold to the they sold to the hospital at the, the beginning of this year. So I lost that account at the beginning of this year, and that was a hit because I was like, oh. That was a lot of revenue for me, but at the same time, it was also a lot of work. I was the only one doing it, and I was spending probably six hours a day just doing it myself, um, and that was just to maintain it. So it was kind of like, okay, blessing in disguise, but I I talked, I talked, met this woman who is a practice administrator through one of my associations that I'm a vendor member for. She was interested in outsourcing. I gave her a proposal, and then she decided not to. And then something happened again, and she called me, and she's like, okay, I'm ready to talk to you again. I, I This happened, and I'm just tired of it, and I can't remember what it is now. But her situation, she did not go with me because she didn't want to. She just was kind of like, eh, trying to figure it all out. And yeah. then, you know, two, three months later, I signed that account, and I was like, wow, I would have never – I thought that was just dead in the water. <laughs> there you go. So you never know. You never know. Well, Juliana, thanks uh, for being on here. I we were at the top of the hour here. Uh, any advice for someone who's never started a business before? Any parting thoughts for for someone who's scared and and don't really know what what to do, but wants to start a new business? Well, definitely go through a company like ABS because I certainly got everything that I expected to get out of becoming a licensee, and I still do today, three or however many years later. I still utilize, you know, all the tools and all the resources. Um, and then the other thing is, just from my personal perspective, is I personally wish that in 2009, when I came out of that training, that I had a part, I came out by myself. Obviously, my husband was behind me, but he wasn't going to be doing anything with the business. I would recommend having a partner. I don't care. Who knows if you split it? I don't even know what you do, and who cares what your model is. But having two people, to having like somebody that's good at something and the other person's better at the other, like maybe somebody's operational, somebody's salesy, but that can bounce things off of because that's the one thing I feel like I – like if I could look back, I would say, oh, in retrospect, I would have tried to find a person that could run this company with me. Um, to yeah. kind of help the brunt of things, but you know, I didn't, and now you know, and I could always find somebody that wanted to buy into it and all that kind of stuff. But you know, I've learned everything now myself. But if I could have had somebody sitting next to me in training and us coming up with things together and that collaboration and all that, I, for me, I, I think I, I would have loved to have done that. Um, so I think anybody looking into it, if you're thinking about a partner, I. I think you should at least uh, see what that looks like um, and have, if you have somebody that you trust and that you want to go into a partnership with because that might be a good way to to be a little more stable in the beginning. Well, that's great advice. Thank you for that, Juliana. I appreciate your time today. Uh, we are right on the top of the hour. I've got a couple more things to say, but thank you very much uh, for being on here. And uh, we're so happy to see that you have – met um, a lot of your goals that you had for starting your own business and you know having more flexibility and family time and being your own boss and all that kind of good stuff so please let us know if there's anything else we can do to help you and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day Juliana thanks oh thanks and thanks for having me all right we'll talk to you later okay bye-bye all right bye-bye bye-bye -bye. well everyone I'm sorry we didn't get to all the questions uh, we had some more coming in but uh, if you would like to uh, get your questions answered, uh, get back with your uh, ABS rep. Um, we, we, you should be having getting some emails from different uh, business coaches that we have working for the company. Get back and call us, and we can uh, put you in touch with Juliana if you'd like, and you can speak with her directly uh, if you didn't get your questions answered. So feel free to do that. 
Next live class is August 11 through 15. The class is filling up, but we do have seats still available. And I'll share you this last uh, last uh, parting thought here. This is a, a quote from our, our CEO, Patrick Phillips. Um, it's regarding the training. He says, if at any time during the live training you feel that this business isn't right for you, uh, just ask one of my staff for a full refund and it will be granted no questions asked. So there you go. Um, you can come to the training, see what it's all about. If you don't feel that it's right for you, you can ask for your money back and we can part as friends. Um, you know, I don't know of any other business opportunity that's uh, offering something like that. So anyway, uh, hopefully you can be on our webinar next week. Check it out and uh, you can sign up on our website, absystems.com. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us and have a great day. Bye-bye.